Hi, this is your host Sopin Bhartia and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Dave Nicoletti, Chair of Cobalt Check. It's an open mainframe project. Dave, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks. Glad to be here. What is Cobalt Check? What does it do and what specific problem are you folks trying to solve with it? Well, it's a unit testing framework for Cobalt. And the problem we want to solve is the fact that uh, COBOL programmers have difficulty using contemporary development methods like test-driven development because the tooling available for the COBOL language and other mainframe languages too uh, doesn't offer the same level of granularity for unit testing as we can get with some other languages like Java and C Sharp. COBOL has been around for so long, I'm pretty sure that's older than I am. Um, I am assuming that you know there should be tools that do the same thing for a long time. Is there lack of tools or there are tools that are available or they're not doing, as you said, you know the, the control that you may want? Sort of a combination of all of those things. Um, there are some tools available for unit testing, but to use contemporary techniques, which involve very small steps that are repeated frequently in a short time span, these tools don't let us write very fine-grained tests or examples that we might call, call them examples, uh, because they can only exercise an entire program object. They can't exercise a subset of that. So what would be equivalent, say, for Java? would be to be able to exercise one method in isolation from everything else. The equivalent conceptually for COBOL would be to exercise one paragraph. And we don't have existing tools that enable us to do that. We have to run the entire program. And for some types of programs, for instance, a Kix program, it can only operate in a Kix environment. So there's a fair amount of set up and manual steps to take in between running each test case. And for the test-driven development workflow, it takes too much time. And so that discourages people from using that workflow. How about tools like Z units? Uh, I mean, there's unit in the name itself. Are they also not doing the same thing? There's unit in the name and Z unit is actually an implementation of the same architectural pattern as J unit and N unit and Pi unit and all these other ones. And it's an, it's a faithful implementation of that architecture. But still, we can't break into a COBOL program or a PL1 program at runtime to carve out a small piece of the program to test. You still have that problem where the smallest unit you can get to is the complete program object or load module. So they don't quite solve that problem. Can you also talk about the origin of COBOL check when it was created, uh, who created it, and how it found its way in the open mainframe project? In 2014, I was working with a, a large financial company, and we were running code dojos for the developers, uh, mostly in Java, but sometimes in other languages. And someone made the comment well, this is great, but it would be impossible to do in COBOL. And so being young and uh, not as mature as I am now, I took that as a challenge and came to the next code dojo with a crude implementation of a unit testing framework for COBOL. And we ran that dojo in COBOL and people liked it a lot. Now, I didn't think anything much would happen with it, but I discovered that over the years, two or three companies had had noticed it on GitHub and were trying to use it. And I got contacted by the Open Mainframe project about it, and I thought, okay, well, if there's a demand for this, then let's do it properly. And we started over with a clean code base around December of 2019. And that is the code base we're working with now. And we now have a team that works on it. It's not just me fooling around. So... This one is the, the real deal and will become a real product. Can you also kind of share what kind of community is around COBOL Check? Uh, and also, what is your development model look like? Is it similar to other open source projects or is it a bit different? Well, there's not a large community around it as yet, but it is of interest to people who are 
working in companies where the mainframe modernization uh, program is important. Now, for companies that are just keeping their legacy alive and not modernizing, there's not much interest in this kind of thing. But to modernize, you have to get into the code, maybe code that has been unchanged for 35 or 40 years, and there's high risk in doing that. So being able to have fine-grained unit tests around that code and being able to drive your changes from test cases, which is what test-driven development does, it's valuable in those environments. So there is a community growing around that. And in fact, one of the companies that just um, forked the original project a couple of years ago, a couple of years before we started in earnest, um, they're pretty serious about it. They have this baked into their CICD pipeline. And they have also assigned one of their full-time staff members to work on this project 12 hours a week. And we now have like four or five people working on it. So there's a, a little bit of a community, and I expect that uh, wherever there's demand for mainframe work, uh, there will probably be interest in this kind of a tool. And you talked about modernization of mainframe, and we have been talking about it a lot. There are two things that is happening is to like bring mainframe to the modern world and also bring modern developers to mainframe. So it's like two two way traffic is going on there. So if you look at Cobalt Check, uh, are you, it's also like kind of aimed towards these modern developers uh, as well. That's why you needed to create that. That was also a factor. Well, if we look at it historically from about the 1990s, this was when this myth started to become popular, that the mainframe was dying. And a lot of people believed in that, and they just turned their, their attention away from the mainframe. And we ended up with two worlds, if you will. There's the mainframe world, and there's everyone else. And they didn't cross over very much. There are very few individuals over the years who have understood both worlds. In the mainframe world, there were business drivers at play to modernize the systems the main one was these large companies have mission-critical applications in place for many years, and no one really understood how they were all interconnected, how the data flowed through the systems. So the first focus for modernization was analyzing the production environment and getting data analytics about how these systems talk to each other. Where is the I.O. workload? Where is the CPU workload? Where are the dependencies? How does data flow through all of these applications? So the focus was on production first. And they, over the years, they have improved things, working sort of backwards, if you will, from production towards development. Meanwhile, in the rest of the world, the business driver was time to market. They were building web applications and, before too long, mobile applications, service-oriented applications. And getting something to market quickly was the main focus. They did not have uh, a big investment in legacy systems, so they didn't have the same situation. And so improvement began at the developer's desk. How can we efficiently get new features to market without just creating a lot of defects? And so the emphasis on improvement was development techniques, testing techniques, packaging and deployment, so you could say in these two worlds, mostly ignorant of each other, improvement between the developer's desk and production were happening, but they were happening in the opposite directions. And now they are meeting. Now we're at a point where everyone needs the robust operational techniques that mainframers understand, and everybody needs the robust development techniques that everyone else has been using. So they're the two worlds are coming together again, especially when you think of how the Z system now is a platform for cloud systems. So everything is now merging together again. I think that's a good thing. But what we have now is a whole generation of software engineers who have never paid any attention to the mainframe. And there's a demand for them. But when they join a mainframe company, they find that they're using ISPF and they feel like they have gone back in time. They don't have the kind of tools that they're used to. So 
COBOL check is meant to provide that kind of a feeling for a developer, the same as if you were using like N unit for C sharp or J unit for Java. But it's also designed so that if you're a COBOL programmer, it's intuitive to you. Uh, one of the issues that I've observed with using something that's based on like a J unit architecture, such as Z unit, is that it's so different from what COBOL programmers are used to that they have difficulty relating to it. So COBOL check tries to provide a syntax that's similar to COBOL, and I've found that when showing it to people, they relate to that syntax very easily, and they often don't even need to look things up. They can just try something that they think would make sense, and it does. So it looks quite different from JUnit tests, but it's the same concept. I'll just go back to the previous question that I asked, which was more about the development model. You talk about the community, but I also want to understand how does the development look like? Is it similar to open source you know, projects, or is it a bit different? Well, it is similar because we're all distributed. The, the company that I mentioned that is actively supporting it is in Denmark, and the rest of us are in the U.S., and as we look for more people for the project, they could be anywhere. So it is open source in that sense that we are are not sitting in the same room, literally, and we work asynchronously most of the time. But it is also somewhat like a, a project team in a company, and, we, and we've intentionally done, it, done this because one of the contemporary practices is uh, mainline development or trunk-based development. Uh, open source projects usually depend on a pull request model, and there's a, a discrete step in the process for reviewing pull requests, which is, of course, a delay. So if we were working in a company, sitting in the same room together, we would not want that delay. We would want to use techniques like mob programming or pair programming so that we have the benefit of review continuously and not have a, a specific process step for that, where everything stops. We've tried to achieve that in our distributed uh, set up, and every team member actually has full privileges to commit to mainline. And what we depend on is our test suite. And our main guideline for development is do not create regressions. So we pay a lot of attention to testing, and we go to great pains to prevent regressions so that we, we, we operate on a trust basis. Anyone who has the authority to commit, we trust them to do their best to avoid creating any problems. And so far, that's worked out okay. You know, we have version control, of course. It's on GitHub. And so if somebody makes a mistake, it's not difficult to back up and fix it. So we do take a kind of a hybrid approach. It's, it's like open source, except we don't do the pull request thing. So it's sort of like working in a company where you wouldn't need to do pull requests. You could you can just work together. Where can one run COBOL check? Can you talk about that also? Oh, well, it'll uh, run with uh, any COBOL compiler. So it can be run on Windows, Mac, Linux, Unix. It can also be run on ZOS, Power System, anything that runs COBOL. And the reason for that is <clears throat> it's designed to fake out all of the external resources. So you don't have a dependency on the execution environment. So the idea is if you have a Kix program, all of the Kix commands, exec, CICS, something, those get commented out. And you can substitute some kind of uh, logic for those to emulate what they would have done in the real environment. So it's sort of like a mock. So we can mock out or stub out anything like that. And that means that the program will run outside of that environment. So you can run your tests uh, on any platform. I often use a Linux VM on my laptop to do it. And then when you're ready to do a higher level of testing where you need to access databases, files, or you need to run in a Kix environment, then you can upload the code and, and run it on ZOS. I haven't tried it on VSE. I imagine you could do that as well. 
but uh, yeah, that's how it works. It's because it's for unit testing. Unit unit testing is the fine grain, the bottom of the test pyramid, if you will. And the rule of thumb there is it has no dependencies on anything external to the code. As soon as you have a test that requires something external to the code, it's not really a unit test anymore. Now it's an integration test or a component test or something else. So this tool is only for unit testing. Yeah, if it is for unit testing, why you didn't call it COBOL test, why COBOL check? Well, that's a, out of respect for the software testing community, to tell the truth, because they really don't like us calling everything testing. They make a distinction between testing, which is a uh, creative human activity that requires thinking, versus verifying or checking that a piece of code behaves the way we expect it to behave under controlled conditions. And I like the distinction because checking or verifying, if you will, or validating, you can automate that. You set up the, the runtime environment, you set up the inputs, and you can verify that the outputs are as expected. You don't need to spend a person's time doing that. A person's time is very valuable. So by automating as much checking as possible, we leave time available for people to do genuine testing, discovering the limits of a system, discovering uh, where it could go wrong, things that we didn't anticipate. So the name reflects that. It's COBOL check. It can automate basic validation of behavior, but it doesn't substitute for real software testing. What are the things that are in the pipeline? What are the things that you folks are working on uh, what does your roadmap look like? For this year, we want to finish building out the functionality that was in the original, the prototype, because the, the, uh, the real code doesn't have all of the features yet. And in fact, this, uh, this company in Denmark that's been using, they started using the prototype, they've learned a lot about what's good or bad about that. And so we're incorporating those lessons in this version. So the main goal for this year is to complete all of that. So we have a really a usable, uh, a realistic version 1.0 that we can release. There's also a line of development to develop a VS Code extension so that programmers can run their tests and see the results from inside of VS Code. At the moment, the implementation is as a standalone program because our main goal was to be able to plug it into a CI CD pipeline. So that works fine. But we don't have the functionality that you would think, say, if you opened IntelliJ, you would expect to be able to run JUnit tests inside the IDE. We're not there yet, but we are working on that as well. Only VS Code is, is what we're working on, not IntelliJ, because VS Code is it's the desktop system of choice for mainframers at the moment, thanks to IBM's OpenZ editor and the Zoe project. So we're going to plug into that ecosystem first. The Open Mainframe project, they have a lot of projects, you know, they're also meant for awareness and help people get started. Like one is that Cobalt programming course as well. Uh, do you have any, you know, uh, any where you live working with them to help the community leverage those courses so that people are more aware of, you know, and also help them get started with the project? Anything in the pipeline? The Open Great. Mainframe Project has a COBOL course in development. It's already usable. It's still being improved. And it's uh, on our roadmap for COBOL Check to include training material with that course for COBOL Check. Uh, our primary goal right now is completing the functionality, of course, and the VS Code extension, but that the training is on our roadmap as well. Dave, thank you so much for taking time out today and, of course, talk about Cobol Check, uh, sharing the history, the origin, and, you know, how it's helping the community. And I would love to have you back on the show when 1.0 release is out. So thank you for your time today. Well, thanks for having me. And, yeah, we'll get together and show you something good, I hope. <laughs>